Let's look at a case where there's a changing area that produces a changing flux. What current is induced in a loop of wire when it is pulled out of a constant magnetic field at a constant velocity v? As shown. Well, the area overlapping the loop and the b field shrinks as the side marked x shrinks. And the flux shrinks because the area shrinks. Now I'll put the loop back so it's a little bit easier to see. So that the, the flux is equal to the integral of the B field dotted into the differential area of differential area. And this, since uh, B is constant over the loop, where it overlaps at least, the magnitude of B times the area x times L is the flux. V induced is then the, the, the minus the time derivative of this flux, which is minus the magnitude of B times L times dx dt. Only x is changing with time. And dx dt is a velocity, so our answer is minus B minus the magnitude of the B field times the length L times V. Kirchhoff's second law then gives us that V induced is equal to the current times R, so the magnitude of I is then just this V induced magnitude of B times L times V divided by R. Uh, which direction is the current going? Well, the induced current should oppose the decrease in flux. You can't change the area by changing the current. So the B field has to increase. This means that if you if you want the B field to increase, your thumb has to be pointing into the page. So your fingers are curling around the circuit in that direction. So the current is going clockwise. Let's look at the forces on the loop. What are the forces acting on, on the loop? We should consider each of the segments. The top segment has a force that points upward. We put our forefinger in the direction of the current, and our, the fingertips on our hand point in the direction of the B field, then our thumb points upward, giving a force upward. Similarly, on the bottom segment, we end up having a force pointing downward. And it's equal in magnitude to the one pointing up, so they cancel. So the top and bottom segments have a net force of zero. The left segment points to the left. Same, similar argument, using the right hand rule. So we have a, a force to the left. The, uh, the magnitude of the force to the left is, is given by the magnitude of the current times this length L times the magnitude of the B field. This is the, the force on a current carrying wire in a B field. If we plug in what the current is, we have that's equal to the magnitude of B times L times V divided by the resistance R. And that is also, that's all multiplied by L times magnitude of B. Simplifying, we get that the force to the left is the velocity times the magnitude of the magnetic field squared times the length squared divided by the resistance. The right segment, well, there's no magnetic force because there's no magnetic, magnetic field there. But the loop is not moving. Uh, but the loop, but the loop is moving at a constant velocity. So F net must be zero. So there has to be a force to the right that balances the force to the left. So F right is equal to F left. So what is happening is that the induced current creates a force that opposes the motion. So F left is opposing the force to the right. That's the force where you're pulling the loop out of the magnetic field. Let's look at the power. The power pulling the loop out of the magnetic field is given simply by the force to the right dotted into the velocity. They're in the same direction, so it simply becomes the velocity squared times the magnitude of the magnetic field squared times the length squared divided by r. And then if we look at the power dissipated by the resistor, well, that's equal to the current squared times resistance which is equal to what we found the current to be, 
this magnitude of the B field times L times the velocity divided by R, that whole thing squared times R. Simplifying, we end up getting exactly the same quantity for the power dissipated in the resistor as, that, or the, as the power of pulling out of the field. Well, this shouldn't be a surprise because the power pulling the loop can't do any work since the kinetic energy does not change. So all the pulling power is dissipated in the resistor.